Bishop Lucia, my brothers and sisters in Christ. How appropriate today's gospel is for this occasion. Just as Peter proclaimed his love of the Lord by word and action, so too our modern day Peter, in the person of Benedict XVI, professed his love and his willingness to teach the love of God by word and deed. He gave us over 70 books, three outstanding epistles, countless apostolic exhortations, theme discussions during the Wednesday general audiences. So many memorable words and phrases that come back to us over and over again. But perhaps most memorable of all are the words he first spoke when standing in the loggia over the crowd in the square below introduced himself as a simple, humble worker in the vineyard of the Lord. This simple, humble man with a warm smile and a calm demeanor was able to teach in a straightforward and logical manner as he devoted himself and his life to preaching the word of God revealed in scripture, in tradition, and in the teachings of the church. And using the scriptures on any given day, he would pull out a lesson a message for daily living that would help us be faithful disciples of the Lord and live out our faith as God intended. Today's reading from Isaiah draws our attention to the heavenly banquet and what a banquet it will be on a mountain, often acknowledged as a place where we meet God, with rich food and choice wines. Death will be no more, and all tears will be wiped away. Isaiah proclaims, this is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. Benedict's faith was grounded not in abstract ideas, but in the encounter with the person of Jesus Christ. Being a Christian, he wrote, is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea, but the encounter with an event, a person, which gives life a new horizon and a decisive direction. His words urge all of us to be open to a personal encounter with Jesus and through him to gaze on God, Father, Son, and Spirit. The reading from Philippians was most likely an early Christian hymn that recounts the Paschal mystery. The Son of God emptied himself, coming in human likeness, becoming obedient to death on a cross. Because of this, God exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every other name. And the hymn concludes with, Every knee should bend, 
and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The Paschal mystery, life, death, and resurrection, plays out in every disciple's death. In his Ash Wednesday homily during the year of faith, Benedict urged us to renew our faith as a true disciple who serves not himself or the public, but his Lord, simply and generously. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Benedict encouraged us through his words and more significantly through his example to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, to imitate his self-gift to God on behalf of others. He reminded us that one who has hope in the message of the gospel lives differently. The one who hopes has been granted the gift of new life. This hope spurs the disciple forward, confident that a new life awaits those who give themselves selflessly to God and others in imitation of Jesus. Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. In the days since his death, every reporter and journalist has quoted that the last words that Benedict spoke were, Jesus, I love you. I think these four words speak volumes about the humble worker in the vineyard of the Lord that we remember in today's Mass. For Benedict, faith was not an abstraction, not a theory, not a speculative thought. Faith is a person, Jesus Christ. And likewise, the end of the journey was not an abstraction for Benedict. It rested in the culmination of a relationship begun at baptism. At a general audience on the Feast of the Assumption, Mary's Assumption into Heaven, Benedict said, her Assumption urges us to raise our gaze toward heaven, not a heaven of abstract ideas, nor an imaginary heaven created in art, but the true reality of heaven which is God himself. God is heaven. Throughout the course of his life, Benedict was an articulate teacher of the faith. His writings before and after his election to the papacy are rich theological reflections which show a generous and pastoral heart. His final words give us the state of his heart at the final moments of his journey of life and faith. His entire life, and perhaps most especially, the contemplative environment of the last 10 years strengthened his faith, hope, and love. Undoubtedly, he sensed that the heavenly banquet was close at hand and prayed. Jesus, I love you. I like to think that shortly after that, the Lord greeted Benedict. Well done, good and faithful service. Come share your master's joy. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him.